Welcome back, guys. In the previous lecture, we have implemented numbers uh, as the constants in the constant pool, and today we're going to talk about mathematical operations. Uh, the first operation we're going to consider is the uh, add instruction, which adds two numbers. And uh, let's start from the new opcode, right? I'm allocating a new opcode, which will have number two as exactly the add instruction. And let's jump directly to the eval. So what should do the add instruction? Well, the add is the binary instruction, uh, which expects two operands on top of the stack, right? It should pop uh, the first and the second operand, do the addition, and push the result back on top of the stack. Uh, for this, let's encode in the opcode two constants, right? The constant with the index zero, let's say it's number two, and the constant with the index one, uh, let's say three. So the result of this program should be five. And the implementation is simple. As we said, we should pop the first operand, which by the time of the executing the add instruction should already be on the stack. Uh, and we should treat it as the number. Right previously, we introduced the uh, accessor as number, which converts the EVA value uh, to the C++ value. So the op1 and op2 here should be just doubles. And then we calculate the result as just addition. And to push the result on top of the stack, we should allocate a new number, right? For this, we call the number constructor, uh, which creates the EVA value and pushes on top of the stack. And also we need to set the stack pointer uh, to the beginning of the stack when we initialize the virtual machine. Uh, this is something we should have been done in the previous lecture. Uh, however, for a single number, it's not that important, uh, but let's set it, right? The same as we initialize the IP, we initialize the SP and point to the first element uh, of the stack. And the result of this calculation should be 5. Let's execute. And uh, it's not 5. Let's see. We got 3. Interesting. Okay. So at this point, I think it's a good time to start working with the debugger. And uh, we're going to use a standard LLDB debugger. Right? Once we have compiled the executable, we pass it to the LLDB. And we're going to break in the eval function. Right, for this, we use the B command, which is short for break, and we tell in which specific function to break. And since we enabled the debugger support when we were compiling this executable, the debugger was able to exactly identify the location of the eval function. As you can see, it correctly understands it's in EVA H on line 90. So once we have the breakpoint set, let's run it using R command, which is shorthand for run. And let's go step by step using the uh, n command, which is next. And as you can see, we read the opcode. That's correct. We correctly understand it's the const instruction and push it on top of the stack, which is right. Now we can actually introspect what is on top of the stack. So let's print it using p command. Right, and really we see the number two is there. Precisely correct. Let's go further. Again, read the opcode, uh, which again should be const, and that's correct push it under the stack, uh, introspect again, number three, exactly correct. And let's check again the first entry, number two. Let's go further. And by some reason we got halt instead of... Oh, we actually forgot to put actual uh, add instruction in, into the bytecode. So let's get back to the uh, EVA source. Right, so this, this is just a typo. Uh, after we evaluate the two operands, which are encoded in the bytecode, we actually need to execute the add instruction, right? The add instruction was never executed here. So let's edit, operation add, and try execute again. And now we get correct five. So congratulations, we now have uh, mathematical operations, which already start to make our language uh, more mature. And with the same success, let's implement uh, all other math operations, such as subtraction, multiplication, and division. Uh, they all get the next upcode number. The implementation will pretty much be identical. Uh, so let's introduce convenient macro called binary operation, binary op, and we'll be passing a specific uh, operation. So I'm just taking everything from the operation end, right? I'm just copy pasting everything from the uh, add upcode here. And here's we need to mention a trick used in C++. Uh, when we have multiple lines, multiple statements, uh, usually we wrap it into the blank uh, do while loop, right, with the value false. This loop is never executed, but it allows us to use the scope, right, since we introduce some um, local variables such as op1, op2, 
we need to create a scope so those values are gone. And for this, we use this trick from C++, again, uh, blank to while loop with the value false. All right, and as we said, we accept the apparent uh, as the parameter to this macro and use it when we push the final result. So that's the macro which we now can reuse for subtraction and other math operations. Let's check it still works. Okay, let's execute. And yes, we still get five. And let's handle the sub operation, uh, multiplication, and division. And let's try evaluating 10 minus 3. Right, for this we push 10 and 3 and then do the sub instruction. And we should be 7. Let's execute. And it's actually negative 7. Okay, we still have a bug. Let's see. Okay, and the reason is here the stack pop operation works in reverse mode. Right, so we first need to pop the upper end 2 and then upper end 1. Right, for addition, it doesn't make much of the difference, but it's very important for the subtraction. Right, remember the stack data structure, first in, last output. That's exactly what we should be writing here. So the first apparent should be up 2 and then up 1. And that should fix it. Let's execute. And yes, we got correct 7. Let's try multiplication. Right, that should be 30. Sounds great. And we actually can do some complex operations now. Uh, let's try doing... 10 times 3 uh, minus 10, which should be 20. Let's check it, and it works. Once again, it now corresponds to the complex operation, right? Nested expression, where the multiplication has the higher precedence, and then we do um, subtraction. And in the next lectures, we'll be actually compiling this as expression to exactly this bytecode. So in the next lectures, we'll start talking about parsing. That's it for today. Thanks, and see you in the class.